Hello and welcome to this overview of the new dungeon battle mat functionality that we're adding into Worldographer. I'm Joe Wetzel, the creator of the program, and uh, we'll be releasing this simultaneously basically with the video. Uh, what you see in front of you is an automatically generated house that Worldographer has created. To do that, you would go up to File, New Dungeon, New Battle Mat, Dungeon Map here. Um, you get a dialogue like this, and you've got a, a couple of settings there for how large do you want your map to be in number of tiles. Uh, we're switching to tiles being the nomenclature for uh, our dungeon and battle mats, um, because a lot of times you want them to be square-based, but many people want hex-based still, so we figure we'll go with tiles um, for, the, for these types of maps. The width and the height for a particular tile is 75. This is always changeable. You can zoom in and zoom out anytime with the plus minus or, or, or these control these number controls over here. And if we want to generate another house, we pick generate house on this side over here. And we get a different floor plan where in this case, we've got a two story house uh, where you've got uh, a, um, a common area here with um, you know some uh, uh, dining area, if you will. And then upstairs, you've got a couple of beds and a couple of closets. So you get, um, there's actually four or five uh, currently different floor plans in there and then some color variations for, for each of those. And uh, that's what the, the house functionality looks like. We also give you uh, the ability to create just a completely blank map to generate a dungeon, to generate uh, an inn, a store, or a tavern, although the inn, store, tavern, those options and some other buildings that we'll be coming out with uh, in the near future are part of our pro features. Um, if you're familiar with Worldographer, uh, there's a free version and then there's a pro version that unlocks some features. And so there's uh, a license code that unlocks the pro features that are related to the large outdoor maps like a world map or a kingdom map. There's a license code that will unlock the pro features that are related to making a city or a village. And then there's the, the, this, this new uh, license code that will unlock the uh, power user features related to uh, creating a dungeon map or, or a battle map of, of any type. Um, so if I wanted to show you how to create a, 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 a map from scratch, uh, I'm just gonna create two rooms pretty quickly in the two different paradigms that we offer. What you would do is you go to the terrain drawer here and here you're going to pick floor to kind of filter it. And this is the approach, this is kind of the tile-based approach where you're going to lay out a couple of tiles on the map and then you're going to create a shape for your wall. So we go to, sh to the shapes drawer and up at the top of this we can uh, do the preset for a wall which just presets that we're going to do a, a dark rock wall. We want to snap the points and, uh, and, and we want the tag to be wall so we've, we, we've uh, got that available for some features down the road. But we can select line and then we're going to click here um, and because I said snap points it's snapping it to the vertices. It will also snap to the ha uh, quarter point, the halfway point, the three quarter point and then all the way across the hex. Uh, and it does that in both directions so you can get that would be your halfway across and halfway down kind of um, uh, point. Control Z will undo that and um, I can go ahead and create the rest of that wall. And so that's one approach to creating your dungeon and you would just you know do more of that um, uh, for more rooms. Uh, you could also though stick with the shapes drawer and uh, go to polygon and in this case you've a texture and we've got a number of, of floor textures into the tool if we wanted to match the texture here this is stone light five by five and um, we can it's no longer just a wall um, so I can even say room if I wanted to um, and then the snapping is still on and so what I can do now is do a new room over here and you've got another room. Um, the nice thing about this though is I can start a new one and um, this gives me the ability to have diagonals. So if I wanted to have a diagonal corridor here, I can. It also with the arc oval tool will allow you to have circular rooms. Um, so that's all nice. The drawback to it is if you want the, you know, the wall to be drawn in at the same time, you kind of, you can't have a corridor exits from your room. You would only be able to add in doors. 
Um, if you want a corridor exits, you'd want to have no wall around it and then draw on the wall as lines like I had just shown you when we were doing this one. Anyway, uh, so continuing on, uh, in addition to that, then we would uh, put in our different features of the dungeon. And again, I want to filter by battle mat things. And here um, I can grab a bed, for example, and I can place the bed in the room. I can uh, select it, and um, if I select it, you see a little yellow, um, well, first an orange a little uh, circle appeared to let me know that I can select that. And then once I did, it, it gave me a larger yellow one with a rotation control here. So I can just click and drag that. If you want your rotation to be exact, um, which I happen to, to, to get right in that case there, but if I wanted it to be exactly 90 degrees and I didn't want to try to finagle the rotation to get it exact, I can, I can use that dialog there. I can also click and drag on it um, in order to move it around. As you can see though, it's a little bit jaggedy because we have this place freely checkbox off. If I check it on, then the dragging is uh, smooth. So we can just drag it nice and smoothly. Um, I can also, if just to kind of wrap this up or do a couple more little things, I can filter by door. I can grab the door. I know that this is rotated by 90 degrees at the moment, so I'm going to put that door there. And if I want to do a second door in the other location, I would hit it to I would change that to um, uh, to zero. Now I see that I had place freely uh, checked on still when I placed those doors. So if I want to get that exact, I can uncheck it and then drag it a little bit, and it will go into place. This one looked about right, but in case if it's not, I'm going to go ahead and do the same for it. And now it's exactly on that wall. Um, the graphics here are really good. These are The graphics are really meant to be printed where each square would be uh, one inch. If I zoom in some more, you can kind of see the detail on the bed, for example. Um, if I turn this off and we just grab like an altar, for example, you can see that there's a lot of uh, detail into the graphics. They're all meant to be printed at that at, at this scale. Um, so anyway, moving on. Um, so that was uh, creating uh, something from scratch. Um, next thing I want to show you is let's go back to that new dungeon battle mat functionality here and let's just show you uh, generating uh, a dungeon. Uh, so the dungeon algorithm isn't complete at the moment, but we'll show you what you get. Um, I just want to have a, a dungeon with uh, slightly fewer corridors. So I go there, and you can see this is kind of what you're getting. If I zoom out more, you can see what it looks like overall. Um, but this is something that we're still making progress on at the moment. New, and this time let's go ahead and generate an in. The in... Um, gives you something like this. And let me zoom out again so you see a little more of it. Uh, you've got a, a, a larger room here, and then you've got the kitchen, uh, an owner's room, common area, stairs going up to the upper floor. And here's your upper floor with smaller rooms, for example. And you get slight variations on that same layout if you were to pull it up again, as well as some color variations. Um, if I go to store, this gives you, in this case, we got a two level store, in which case the uh, owners live upstairs. Let me zoom out a little bit there, and um, yeah, I guess you can just barely see the whole thing in one view there without me panning anymore. Uh, but you've got the main store area with a number of tables and bookcases, and then some storage in the back, stairs leading up, a back door so the owner doesn't have to go through the store every time. Upstairs you've got a large um, family area here and a couple of large bedrooms because this happens to be one of the larger layouts for the store. It can be um, even half that size if we run it again, for example. Um, sure, why not? Let's do so. So this one did, and you can see that this is only four, four um, tiles across, whereas the other one's five tiles across, and it looks like it's even larger uh, lengthwise as well. So um, that gives you an idea of the store. And then one more uh, is the tavern. The tavern's a variation on the inn. And uh, you can see that in this case now, instead of having a common area or a common sleeping area in the back for uh, all the people that don't want to pay too much, 
uh, you've got a back room here instead. And you can also have a back room that's divided up into smaller rooms as well. Um, so that's, that's what you get out of the box as far as that goes. Um, another feature that I'm really proud of is this Make Dungeon Morph, Dungeon Geomorph map. Now, those of you who know more about Inkwell Ideas know that in addition to making Worldographer, we make the Dungeon Morph dice and Dungeon Morph cards. These um, products are uh, dice that have many dungeon designs on them or matching cards. Each design has a, a corridor, two corridors at e on each side of of the design. So you'd have eight eight um, corridors on, on each design, and they and they can all be placed together and joined together to make one larger map. So we we kind of added that functionality into Worldographer here. And so what we can do here is um, set this to be say ten by ten, and then three maps across by three maps across. Now 10 by 10 because the maps that I happen to set up were 10, 10 squares by 10 squares and then we're going to do uh, nine maps total in a three by three grid essentially. So I click OK and this is pulling up a folder where I have several of them stored. Now we have an auto save which don't, we don't need to load that in but I made six ahead of time and so we can open this up and it's opening them and rotating them as well uh, randomly. So randomly determining which ones to add. So it happened to pull up two of the crypt ones, um, and you can see that they're rotated a little bit differently. Uh, let me zoom out a little bit more. Maybe you can see a little bit better. Let me also um, sketch out roughly where is a geomorph so you get a better idea of what I'm talking about there. If I, let me change this line color to red. So a dungeon geomorph is like this. That would be one. And you see you have a, an entrance uh, corridor here, 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 and here. And so those all uh, allow you to join up to the next one. And so you can see you've got several other designs. Like I said, we had picked six, so it happened to pick uh, pretty distinctive having the, the coffins here that you can see that it happened to pick that one three times. This is a prison block design, and so you can see um, this one was picked once. You can see you've got a statues in this design here, and that one happened to be picked once, and um, so on. Now, if we want to add even more, I can, I can, if I, if I want to be more specific about it, I also have a new functionality uh, open into this map. And before I do that, I want to go to the tools um, and expand shrink number of columns. And I'm going to add in 10 more columns onto the right side so that we'll have room to place in that, that next, next design here. So then I can go to file, open into this map and I can say 30, 30 squares across because that's where this point would be and zero high. Let's put in a new design and I can also rotate it if I want to but I'm going to leave it as is and say I want to have a guard barracks area type thing there. Well, so I can pick that, open it and it appears. And this design is designed to be guard barracks. We have a larger sleeping area for most of the guards. You've got a couple of smaller rooms for say the, the captains. Um, you've got a training area for them to, to kind of fight in. You've got uh, a, an open area here for them to kind of monitor who's coming through this section of the, of the uh, complex. Um, and so that's the concept behind this design. But anyway, you've, you, can, um, you can see that you can add in other maps. So you can make snippets of maps of any size and then put them into a larger design uh, one by one. So we've got that functionality there. Um, other bits and pieces that I should go over. One other thing is um, in tools we have switch icons to a simple style, switch icons to a realistic style. We're currently in the realistic style. So if I go simple, you're going to see that the icons get, get swapped out, the textures kind of get changed a little bit, and you get a design like this. Um, and this is good for saving printer ink for, you know, if you wanted to have a DM's view of the map that you want to print out the whole thing, um, this might be better for you. Um, or of course you can go back to the realistic style and all the icons that are kind of built in, um, well, where it makes sense, all the icons have um, alternates in the, in the uh, simple style. 
Um, if you if you're making a table with you know 20 different potions on there, there aren't little mini icons for little potion bottles, for example. But uh, your doors and your statues and your altars and all the all the larger things have simple versions. Um, other things that I should go over uh, over here is our uh, check update licenses. So like I said, there's three different possible licenses for Worldographer overall, whether you're talking about the, the main Worldographer license for the world and um, kingdom maps, or the battle map maps that we're adding now, or the city village maps that we had added a few months back. That's all there. Um, and I think that covers everything in the new update. I hope that, you know, I want to keep this short, keep your attention span, but also want to go over all the features and show you the basics of creating a map. And I think that, I think we've done that. Uh, if you've got questions, post them, uh, especially to our own forums, inkwellideas.com. You can uh, find the forums there. Um, also support at inkwellideas.com if you've got a specific problem that you, that you think relates just to you. Um, appreciate it. Uh, thank you for it very much for your support, and I hope you're able to make some good maps with the tool. Thank you.